What did we learn from the Big Ten Media Days when it comes to the Minnesota Gophers plus breakout players for 2024 today? You are Locked On Golden Gophers, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, Gopher fans? You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. And that is going to be true starting on Monday, Monday through Friday. We're back at it every single day of the week. So now's the time. Football season is almost here. Practices are going to be starting and we're going to give you the latest and greatest. We're also breaking down every Every single opponent for the Minnesota Golden Gophers coming up in these latest shows. We're going to get into the changes. We're going to get into transfers, coaching changes, uh, impact players, departures, all of that for every single Gophers opponent. So if you think you're not ready for the college season, if you hit subscribe, you will be by the time kickoff starts. After we break down every opponent, we're moving over to the Gophers themselves, breaking down every single position group and where it ranks in the Big Ten in my mind. So we're going to have a whole lot of information for you starting this upcoming week. So be sure to hit subscribe. Tell other Gophers fans about the show. Let's get back to it let's get back at it and Tristan Spanford is gonna be back with us this season so if you love the vibes definitely be sure to hit subscribe leave a five-star review wherever you get podcasts and let's grind it out for another gopher season now today we're talking about learnings from the Big Ten media days especially when it comes to the gophers on top of that we're gonna talk about five breakout candidates for 2024 and finally do the gophers have the toughest matchup in the Big Ten in week one we're gonna dive into all of that today so sit back relax and enjoy the show let's kick it off with gophers Big Ten media days now Big Ten media days was wild as a whole even for all teams we learned some things uh, Indiana's new head coach Kirk Signetti went out there. And he was saying, basically, do your homework. Look about, look me up, look me up, search me on the internet. But hey, look how I have done every time I am put at the bottom or the second to last team in the preseason polls. Go look how we did. Basically, like, look, I know I'm him. I'm ready to do this thing. Indiana's going to be back on the map. He came out aggressive, and a lot of people really loved it. And you know what? I'm not going to lie to you. It made me a little bit more interested in Indiana as a whole. So shout out to Kirk Signetti, big moves from him. We'll see if he can hold up that end of the bargain on top of that. New Washington coach, Jed Fish. He was out there speaking like Kalen DeBoer's big W's from Washington versus Texas and Washington's wins versus Oregon over the past years were his own. It was really weird to see him basically claiming, and I get it, he's the new Washington coach. He was speaking about Washington, but usually coaches don't claim dubs like that. So it was a little odd to see. Now, on top of that, Deshaun Foster, UCLA's new coach, absolutely dropped the ball, nearly paralyzed in fear in the opening address, it looked like. Uh, it was like when a teacher asks you for a term report and you forgot you were supposed to do it and you get up there and you do it on the spot and you're just like, and um, the book was about this and this guy did this and yep. That happened. That is how he opened his address. He make it up on the spot, deer in the headlights type of look for the UCLA head coach. Definitely not a great opening entrance for UCLA as a program into the Big Ten. Then you look at P.J. Fleck, Matt Rule, and a couple other coaches. Really, Dan Lanning, I loved what he said out there. They look highly, highly uh high quality. They look intelligent. They look ready to change with the times, but also ready to do what it takes to win, especially with rule, especially with Fleck talking about um, just their understanding of where college football is going in the NIL space and things like that, but understanding how they can shape it for the program and how it matters more about about building for the right fit and finding the right fit for these recruits as opposed to just throwing money and seeing where it sticks. It was definitely some interesting findings from both of them. I think they won a lot of people over on other outside media sources. But in the end, we are here to talk about what we learned from the Gophers at Big Ten Media Days. So here are eight things that I wanted to bring up. First, Dragon Kesich has all the moxie, all of the 
personality, all of the hype. This dude is so wild. We already knew this, but it was awesome to see him with the Gophers team, especially as an additional representative as the Gophers social media liaison. But the dude is hyped. The dude made some waves with the Big Ten Network, and it was fun to see. Now, secondly, PJ Flex said that he failed his team on defense last year. They were playing at an elite capacity in the fall camp with a lot of complexities within the defense, and they were playing at an advanced level. But when in injuries like Cody Lindenberg hit and others, then your young guys needed to come in and they couldn't really play up to those complexities because they were still under the fire and learning the ways of playing live reps. So something simple and faster, that's what they needed. And the staff took too long to adjust to that. And he puts that onus on them, on himself, on the staff as a whole. So, I mean, you love to hear that, but at the same time, like what's done is done. And hopefully we all learn from it and can move forward. Now, speaking of Cody Lindenberg, point number three, he called Cody Lindenberg one of the best linebackers in the entire Big Ten Conference and the heartbeat of this defense. He also said he was the most important player on the defense last year, which I think he might just be hyping this guy up a little bit, like take that for what it is, because Tyler Newbin was definitely one of, if not the most important player on the defense. But Cody Lindenberg was definitely a top two, top three most important player, and we lost him. So that was a big loss last year, especially with him being the communication factor in that middle linebacker core, in the front seven and everything like that. So I get what he's saying. But Cody Lindenberg, big hopes, big high hopes for him. Coach Fleck has always been praiseworthy of Cody Lindenberg, and when he's healthy, we've seen why that praise is earned but hopefully we can get a fully healthy season for Cody and hopefully Cody can get that for himself and maybe take a shot at the NFL now the fourth thing is coach Fleck mentioned how he likes this wide receiver room and he thinks it's deep it has depth and also he praised Christian Driver who we didn't get to see this spring so that's a name to keep an eye on we'll probably talk about him a little later on the show but Christian Driver he said ask any of the players ask any of the guys in the room, ask anybody else. They'll tell you he is different when he gets on the football field. That's what you'd love to hear. And also what you would maybe expect when you're talking about Packers Hall of Fame wide receiver's son and Donald Driver's son, Christian Driver. So hopefully he gets some time here with Minnesota. Hopefully he gets the opportunity to show that potential and thrive here with the Golden Gophers. Now, the fifth thing is he praised Max Brosmer up and down, left and right, side to side, you name it. He talked about Max Brosmer as the leader and as a guy on and off the field. It was also mentioned uh, throughout the different findings that he, Max Brosmer, has been sitting in on the coaches' meetings to be on the same page with the staff or to be able to uh, voice different things or be more prepared or things like that for his team moving forward. And that the Gopher staff has absolutely loved that. They were hesitant to it at first, but now that they've gotten into things and kind of seen the process go and whatnot, they love it. And I wouldn't be surprised if they keep that going beyond Max Brosmer, especially if he's teaching a guy like Drake Lindsay or Dylan Whitkey or who is ever going to be up next, those same type of uh, habits, those same type of uh, practice styles, the same type of leadership abilities. If he's teaching that, this Gophers qu quarterback room could be changed for the better for years to come, all from what Max Brosmer is doing. So we'll see if that comes to fruition on the field. And I am extremely hopeful that he is going to ball out. And this will be a Gophers quarterback that we haven't seen in quite some time, maybe since 2019 Tanner Morgan. So overall, I'm really looking forward to that one. But Coach Fleck had nothing but high praise from Max Brosmer, which is what what we continue to get from Gophers teammates, Gophers staff, and what have you when talking about Max Brosmer. Now, point number six, the talk around special teams was wanting to create more explosive plays, more opportunities. And the more you think about it, Coach Fleck loves the way Iowa plays, except for maybe may, want, would want to pass a little more. But defense, time of possession, excellent on special teams. That's what he would love. On top of that, Coach Fleck talked about Michigan's team from last year and how they showed you need to be a team in order to win. You, A team can win a championship. And that Michigan team is probably the ideal type of team Coach Fleck would love to build. A team that can ground and pound with a stud running back. A team that has a game-managing quarterback that can make the right decisions in the right place, but it doesn't have to pass the ball a ton if it doesn't need to in a high-quality defense. That Michigan team was P.J. Fleck's dream team and that is what he ideally would love to build with the Golden Gophers. So that's the type of style 
of play you could look for and that's what he's hoping special teams can be for the Gophers in explosives and creating more opportunities now the final two points is expect more running back usage across the room C.A. Bagura is going to get a lot of time but he also mentioned Marcus Major he also mentioned Mangham he also mentioned Jordan Newbin now are all those guys going to get a ton of touches no but he talked about how the running backs are going to be used a lot more in the passing game which we have been begging for these last two seasons and now we see it's going to start to come to fruition hopefully now we saw a little bit last year and every time they used it and turned to it last year it was effective it came up in big plays a lot of first downs if we can get it more incorporated this year which I think we will because Max Brosmer has proven he is not afraid to hit the check down and get the running back going. His running back at New Hampshire just got drafted. So overall, I think it's going to be better for the running backs, but expect to see Darius Taylor a lot. Expect to see a lot of C.A. Bengura, who was doing really well in the MAC, and then you could see a third back featured here and there throughout the season, whether it's Newbin, whether it's Major, or what have you. So a lot of running back usage. And then finally, the safety usage. Coach Fleck mentioned how in 2024, he's looking forward to Corey Heatherman's creative usage of the safeties is really excited about it because he thinks that a lot of those guys will get opportunities. They have a lot of depth in the safety room and Corey Heatherman's defense is going to allow them to not just have one or two guys that are starters and everybody else has to wait in line. They're going to have moments where a lot of different guys can get featured in special roles, specific packages and what have you. So a lot of potentially exciting things for Minnesota as we turn to the next season. But next we're going to talk about five players that I think could be breakouts in 2024. That's what's coming Coming up next. First, I want to talk to you about our friends over at FanDuel.com because this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus on the daily. That's right. There's something for you and everyone every day all summer long. So if sports aren't sporting the way you want them to, you can still dream up whatever you can think of. On FanDuel, lets you keep sports going whenever you want. All you have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime you are in the mood. So head to FanDuel.com and start making the most of your summer. And right now, you can take a look at week one and week zero matchups. They've got the Gophers on there, the home game against North Carolina. Right now, the Gophers are two and a half point favorites. So being at home is helping the Gophers a lot. But the number that intrigues me is the over under of 50 and a half points. Now, that should be a number that you could hit the over with. If you look at the Gophers matchup from last year, I believe the Gopher, I think they took the over on that uh, one. I'm just going off the top of my head. I think uh, North Carolina had above 30 points. I think the Gophers had... I can't remember if they had 13 or if they got into the 20s. If they got in the 20s, they got the over right there. But that over is tempting. But week one games, week one games are the ones that you should be leaning more towards the under in most occasions because they're shaking off the rust. They're getting ready and all these things. So 50 and a half points. I think I take the under in that North Carolina, Minnesota game. North Carolina getting used to a new quarterback. Minnesota is going to want to control the clock. Both defenses have upside, have potential. I think you take the under there, but that North Carolina matchup is over on FanDuel where you should check it out and dream up your sports bets today. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Locked On. All right, Govers fans, we're going to fly through five potential breakout candidates for this upcoming 2024 season. Now, five players, I believe, might not be full-time starters. They might not be the guys that are on the field at all given points, but I think they will find opportunities this year. They will find a rotation role. They will find ways to contribute and they will show flashes and sec possibly secure a starting role in 2025. So I think that this is the year that they break out. They have those opportunities. They put their name on the map. They have fans excited for what could be with them. So these are my five breakout players. Now, number one is someone we already mentioned earlier in the show, Christian Driver. Now, someone, maybe some two players are bound to break out from this wide receiver room that are younger, and it's going to happen probably in some rotational capacity this year, but we need starters starting next year. Daniel Jackson's gone. Elijah Spencer is going to be gone. So somebody has to answer the call and be the next man up. Now, Tyler Williams, a freshman transfer from Georgia is coming in. He could answer that. Kenrick Lanier is on the team. Uh, he could answer that. Nuke Hayes is on the team. He could answer that. TJ McWilliams is on the team. He could answer that. Last of potential options but the Gophers brought in Christian Driver Donald Driver's son and you know what they were being very particular about where they were going to go for their next stop I am sure Wisconsin was right there like look come here Green Bay Wisconsin the world will love you the Wisconsin fan base will absolutely adore you and he chose the rival 
He chose the Minnesota Gophers. So when Coach Fleck comes out and he says that what they've been seeing, it's special. And he says, ask anybody else, ask anybody in a different room, in the same room, or what have you, that that kid is different when he touches the field. If that's the truth and that's how it is, I think Christian Driver could be in for a breakout season for the Gophers and assert himself as maybe the number one receiver moving forward. Definitely that receiver room is going to have at least one, but I'm going to put my money on Christian Driver right now as we head into fall camp. Now, number two on the breakout players, I think, is Kerry Brown. I think Kerry Brown could earn a starting safety role after how he finished last year, how I saw him in the spring. I think he's going to have his name in the conversation at the very least. Now, if they do start with Darius Green and maybe a Coleman Bryson or what have you, like I said, the, the safety packages are very intriguing to Coach Fleck. He loves the creative usage of them. And that means Kerry Brown's going to find his way on the field in some capacity. And that means that he's going to have the opportunity to show flashes and put his name out there. So if he doesn't secure a starting role, I think he could moving forward. So Kerry Brown is a name that I think could break out this year. I'm really excited to see how the Gophers use him in 2024. Now, the next player I have talked about time and time again because I I know this dude has it, and he is going to be next up when it comes to this cornerback's room, and that is Zaquan Bryan. Look, Justin Wally is gone after this year. Ethan Robinson is gone after this year. Someone has to step up, and I think Zaquan Bryan is the guy to do it. He has track speed. If you haven't seen his high school times, the boy is sub 11 seconds. He can get it done. On top of that, he was a freak wide receiver for his high school team, all state Georgia wide receiver. He gets it done, but his instincts, his speed, his instincts, and the fact if you have not watched the tape, whether it be the bowl game, whether it be high school, the dude can pop folks. The dude has power, hit power instincts paired with power, paired with speed. That's a dangerous combination. And I think Saquon Bryan, he might not be an outside starter this year, but he is going to make a case for himself to be in the rotation as a cornerback, whether it be in the slot, whether it be subbing in as a uh, outside fill in rotational corner, he will find a way on the field and he will show his talent there. And I think he will secure a starting starting spot by 2025. So Zaquan Bryan is in my three listed names so far of five breakout players. That leaves two others to talk about. Now, the next one I want to talk about is Philip Daniels. Now, Philip Daniels could head into fall in battle Martez Lewis and Illumined Kell as the starting right tackle. And if he does that, obviously he's set up for a breakout year as a starter, as a red shirt freshman. That would be amazing for Philip Daniels. But even if he doesn't secure that job, I remember vividly. In the spring sessions, Philip Daniels coming in in six-man packages, coming in in wildcat packages. They are going to find ways to get Philip Daniels on the field like they found ways to get Greg Johnson on the field last year. Now, Greg Johnson wasn't a starter for the Gophers, but he is this upcoming season. I think a same transition could happen for Philip Daniels if he doesn't win the job outright. Now, he, if he doesn't win it outright, I think he gets into six-man packages, rotational packages, gets some time on the field because the Gophers have Ariante leaving. They have Quinn Carroll leaving. They have Tyler Cooper leaving. That's three starters right there all leaving at the end of the year. You have to get some guys going in on-field experience so that way you don't have a bad transition after. Philip Daniels will be on the field this year, and I think he is going to have a breakout. Finally, my number five player in the breakout category is Pierce Walsh. Pierce Walsh, tight end, redshirt freshman, and I think the reason he finds himself on the field is because Nick Callerup is going to be gone at the end of this season. Jameson Gears, I believe, has another year of eligibility. We'll see what comes of it, but I think this tight end room is wide open. And from what I saw in the spring, and even last fall, I remember seeing Pierce Walsh in some of the rofer periods being like, oh, that was nice. Oh, he scored a touchdown. Oh, okay. Let's see what this kid can do. You look at him now, he's put on more weight, he looks more fluid, he looks more confident, and then you see him in the spring and he is just grabbing some amazing catches, great timing with both quarterback Drake Lindsey and quarterback Max Brosmer. Pierce Walsh is a guy that I think by 2025 will be a starting tight end for this Gophers team, but I think he's going to find ways out on the field this year. I think he's going to have moments where he secures some catches and the Gophers are going to be like, look, we got to get this guy in the field. 
He's got hands. He comes across the middle. He is a safety net, safety valve for the quarterback. Pierce Walsh is going to be on the field. Those are my five breakout candidates. Christian Driver, Kerry Brown, Zaquan Bryan, Philip Daniels, and Pierce Walsh. Let me know if you have a different breakout candidate down in the comments below over on YouTube. I love to hear what Gophers fans are thinking. But today, to wrap up today's show, we're going to talk about week one. Toughest Big Ten matchups. Do the Gophers have the hardest one in the conference? We're jumping into that to close up today's show coming up next. All right, Gophers fans, we're talking about the toughest Big Ten Week 1 matchups. Do the Gophers have the hardest matchup in Week 1? Probably not the hardest, but it's definitely top three in my opinion. If you look at the schedule for Week 1, it'll be here before we know it. And now... Uh, for for years, opposing Big Ten fans have talked about the Gophers having a cupcake schedule, especially in the non-conference. They play cupcakes, and that was not the case last year when we played North Carolina. Drake made number th- what three pick overall last year, and he scorched the Gophers, plain and simple. And I would say that UNC on the schedule, that was far from the truth. And then again, you look at this year, UNC is back on the schedule. I think the Gophers have a tough one with that, but in the fact Of week one, 17 Big Ten teams play in week one. Minnesota has one of the top three hardest games of those 17 teams. And I would say you could make a case that it is the second hardest game on the schedule or at the very least the third hardest game on the schedule. Now, all of the other teams, a lot of them have cakewalk. Six of them play FCS opponents and eight others play G5 or independent schools. You've got Illinois against Eastern Illinois. It should be an easy dub. Rutgers versus Howard, easy dub. Purdue versus Indiana State, easy dub. Iowa versus Illinois State. Illinois State's a better FCS school. They did just have a quarterback change and everything like that, so easy dub. And then Washington over Weber State and then Oregon over Idaho. All of those FCS games should be blowouts in my opinion. Now, the eight others that play G5 or independent schools, Northwestern versus the Miami of Ohio. Now, Miami of Ohio had a lot of changes in their player personnel. That being said, Miami of Ohio was a really good team last year, so maybe they could try to challenge Northwestern, but Northwestern has a coach they believe in. They're scrappy. I think they'll get it done. That's probably a dub. Ohio State versus Akron, smash dub. Nebraska versus UTEP. Nebraska is going to light them up defensively. Indiana versus FIU. That is a very intriguing matchup. Kirk Signetti. Uh, coming from the G5 level of James Madison, he's seen play opponents like this before. He should be able to find a way, especially with higher quality resources. But FIU is not an easy G5 team. They're going to give a challenge. Maybe that's a closer game down to the third or fourth quarter, and then Indiana pulls away. Wisconsin versus Western Michigan, another team that should be pretty quality when it comes to G5 opponent. Uh, Michigan State versus FAU, that should be a dub. Maryland versus UConn. UConn showed some flashes last year, but should be a dub in Michigan versus Fresno State. That's probably the hardest G5 of all of those, but it's Michigan. They're going to get the dub. So all 14 of those matchups are home games against Lower opponents, they should all be easy wins for the Big Ten teams. Then you have the top three games, which are definitely by far the hardest games, and the Gophers game falls in that category. You have Minnesota at home versus North Carolina. Now, North Carolina did have some big departures, but they still have players, impact players, back this year. Then you've got Penn State at West Virginia and USC at LSU. That is by far easily the hardest game of all of them. So definitely USC has the hardest game in week one. Now, personally, I think Minnesota would probably be the third hardest game since it's at home. Uh, That plus UNC lost Drake May. They lost Tez Walker, both huge losses. But UNC's defense has a number of returning guys on top of Omari Hampton was an all all level running back last year. I believe he's a Doak Walker finalist last year. And then they have Nesbitt, the big tight end back as well. So North Carolina will be one heck of a challenge regardless. Plus they bring in a transfer quarterback in Max Johnson. They've got Connor Harrell or Colin Harrell. I always flip on his first name. He's back as well. He played in the bowl game for him. So UNC is going to be a tough opponent, plain and simple. West Virginia on the road, that's a tough environment. And with them having their top two running backs back, plus their quarterback back, plus three or four offensive linemen back, West Virginia is in good shape. They would be my number two hardest game in my opinion, but I think Penn State is 
a, a mammoth. I think Penn State is going to be in the conversation to be in the Big Ten Championship between Ohio State, Oregon, and Penn State. I think Penn State could shock some people this year. So I think that they have a harder opponent, Penn State, on the road at West Virginia, but I think Penn State will handle it easily. And then, of course, USC on the road at LSU, easily the most difficult game. Death Valley is already one of the top five hardest places to play. Plus, LSU will likely be ranked to kick off the season. So even after losing their two best wide receivers to the first round of the draft, their Heisman winning quarterback to the first round of the draft, LSU will still be super difficult. They still have the number one offensive lineman in the country. They have a top five offensive lineman with him to pair on that O-line. They've got Perkins on the D-line. They've got uh, Jackson as a running back. If Nussmeyer stays hot like he was in the bowl game versus Wisconsin, USC is going to be in some trouble in week one. So if Minnesota can pull off the win at home, then hopefully the world will stop underestimating the Gophers team quickly to kick off 2024. Maybe we can get on a little run we've talked about on the show. Could they go 4-0? If you haven't caught that, check it out. But I think the Gophers, with a tough matchup, can start off strong here in 2024. That's going to do it for us on today's show. Now, like I said, next week, starting Monday, we're breaking down the Gophers' importance, starting with North Carolina. You're going to find out about the transfers out. You're going to find out about the transfers in. You're going to find out about coaching changes and so much more. So be sure to hit subscribe over on YouTube and follow wherever you get the podcast. Leave a five-star review. Thank you so much. That's going to do it for us here at Locked On Golden Gophers. Row the boat, Sky Yuma, go Gophers as always, and don't forget to hit subscribe.